Hello, you guys. Welcome back. My name is Alexis. Today is story time. Um, it's a very sensitive topic for me. Um, we're going to be talking about trying to conceive recurrent pregnancy loss and also insulin resistance. Um, so, um, I had five losses. Um, I have on the pregnancy test except for one because one I didn't get a pregnancy test I didn't even know I was pregnant until I was in the middle of miscarrying um, so these is the four um, I just recently had one back in May um, that was my fifth loss um, the furthest I ever been was seven weeks that was my fourth pregnancy and I thought that one was gonna go good but um, when dealing with this, it's not easy, you know, anyone dealing with it or going through it, it's not easy, you know, I'm here to just bring awareness and let people know that it's not easy for everyone. And I had my first um, miscarriage at 21, which I was so surprised, like, why is this happening to me? You know, I thought it's something that happens, like, if you drink while pregnant, which I was, but I didn't know. So with that, my first one, um, my mom and my grandmother kept telling me I was pregnant. I felt pregnant, but I was taking pregnancy tests and they were negative. Like every test I took were negative. I took about 10 tests, negative. Um, went to Miami, got turned, got drunk, came back. You know, I got my period, which felt like a period. I got my period, so... I'm like, mom, I'm not pregnant. I got my period. And then, like, after my period, like, two, three days later, I was at work, and I had these really bad cramps. Like, it wasn't my regular menstrual type of cramps. It was hurting. Like, somebody just repeatedly stabbing me. I was hot. I was sweating. It was just, it was just terrible. And I went to the bathroom. It was just so much blood. Like, it's like a blood bath. Like, it was just so much just coming out just leaking and i'm calling my mom showing her she's like alex why are you showing me this and i'm like mom like what is going on she's like you're miscarrying and i'm like mom no i'm not i was never pregnant i told you that i was getting frustrated because i'm like mom is really something wrong with me so I'll go to the hospital you know i go to the hospital um they took a urine which was negative they took hcg which was a positive and it was like your levels are very low for you to be four weeks they did a sonogram and everything they couldn't find no baby they couldn't find no sex they couldn't find anything and it was like yeah it looks like you're miscarrying um about four days later um actually i had to go to the doctor my doctors every other day to get blood work to make sure my levels were dropping to make sure that the baby passed so about three four days later after my hospital visit i was on the toilet and um, I had, again, real bad cramps, something just like shoot out, like just slid out, like it's like a baseball size. And I'm like, oh my goodness, flushed it, you know, and just kept it moving. And my second one I had, you know, I did find out I was pregnant. I felt pregnant and my boobs feel sore. I was nauseous and I took a pregnancy test. Um, and again, I ended up miscarrying kept it moving kept it pushing kept going to work my third one um that one was my second one was in 2018 around march um and my third one was around november of 2018 i had two in 2018 um again i was pregnant i was happy i'm like this one's going to be the one this is my third pregnancy you know i took off work you know i was just doing everything that i could possibly do um again i started cramping real bad bleeding and actually um because the third one i was trying to find a new doctor because i love my doctor um he was my mom doctor as well dr pleader um but i just felt like he couldn't help me like um the only thing he kept telling me was like you know you're still young you know um maybe your body knew that the baby was going to be healthy and it passed it but i'm like something is going on you know so my third one 
um, they wouldn't give me an emergency appointment. Um, they just kept saying, come get back blood work and all that. And I'm like, okay. So I actually found a lady doctor, somebody, her name was uh, Dr. Dion Oliver. I went to her most terrible experience I ever had with a doctor. Um, went to her, um, bleeding, I'm cramping, I'm trying to save my baby. Um, first of all, my appointment was at 8.45. I didn't get seen till like 10. Um, I was in the back forever. She came, you know, looked at everything. Oh, yep, you look like you're miscarrying. She asked me, um, about birth control. I'm like, no, I don't want to get on birth control. I was on birth control for 14 and 19. I feel like that has a lot to do with why I'm miscarrying now, why it's such a hard time. She was like, um, well, I think you should get on birth control because if, because she asked me that I plan my baby. I'm like, no, it's just something that just happened. And she was like, well, I think you should get on birth control. And I'm just like, no. So then she was like, you need to follow me on Instagram. I'm going to get it to, I'm going to get you to gather up birth control. Because next thing you know, you got all these different baby daddies. Don't you want the white picket fence? Don't you um, want to be married and all this stuff? So you don't know me from Adam and Lee, sweetie. You know me. I'm already upset. You know, I have a low temper, short tempered. And I'm looking at her like, ma'am. And she just kept talking. I said, you know what? I got off the table, got dressed. Yeah, my, I left a bad review. Then she made an Instagram video about me. It was just real terrible. And this was an African-American lady. Um, you know, I'm not bashing her because some people love her. And, you know, a lot of people recommended me. And they love her. Oh, she's so good. But my experience was terrible. And I would never go. I wouldn't even recommend anyone to her. But yeah, so I ended up miscarrying. So my fourth one, um, at the third one, I did go into deep, deep depression. I was really sad. I didn't want to go back to work. I was off of work for like three months. Didn't want to go back to work. It was just real. It was just a real hard time for me. Like at this time, I'm 22. You know, my boyfriend, he already has a child. And it was just like, wow, like, why is it not happening for me? And so I went into a bad deep depression. Like I just was like, you know what? I was just ready to just like, just give it up on it all. You know, I was just crying every time I see a baby, you know, it was just real hard. So then I went to work, you know, everything was going good. And then around March, um, I was at my dad I was at work but I was working from home and I felt pregnant and I'm like I think I'm pregnant called my best friend like yeah I think I'm pregnant she was like well you need to take a pregnancy test I said oh I'm scared because every time I find out I'm pregnant you know the worst happened so I ended up going to the store getting a pregnancy test took the pregnancy test it was positive so when you get a positive you know me happy me I'm happy, but I'm anxious at the same time. My anxiety is rising because it's like, I just knew it was going to happen. Like, I just knew this baby was just not going to stick. I just knew. So, I called my doctor. I actually, I called my doctor, took off of work, called my doctor. I'm like, yeah, I just found out I was pregnant. Again, this is Dr. Pleader that I was going to go see. Um, he, he was on vacation. So the lady, I said, yeah, I need an emergency appointment, you know? And so I actually went and got blood work done. So he was like, yeah, you're pregnant. You know, your levels is looking good, but your progesterone is kind of low. That's what the lady had told me, the other nurse. So I'm like, okay, so are you going to prescribe me something? Because by then I didn't research, you know? about progesterone it can either give you the injections or you can get the um pills and you just insert them every day vaginally so he was um she was like no we're not gonna prescribe you you know your appointment you'll be here for your appointment um six week appointment something she said six week appointment and we'll just do the sonogram and everything i'm like well ma'am you know this is my fourth pregnancy i don't want to lose it I would rather take action now, like, if I need, so, nothing was done, so, 
I had made an appointment. I had did my own research. I said, you know what, I'm tired of this. Um, I actually called my insurance and found doctors and I heard the GMB, GBMC is very good. So I found a doctor, Dr. Kazami, um, Dr. Victor Kazami at GBMC. So he had like great ratings. He had like a 4.8, um, a 4.8. So I'm like, wow, like females was traveling 45 minutes. I went 45 minutes just to see this doctor. And he was, he was very older. Um, and I like male doctors. I don't really like female doctors, but I like male doctors. A lot of females don't, but I had my appointment with him on, um, my first appointment was April 1st. I found out I was pregnant March 25th. So, um, I'm like, okay, so everything was going good. I was like, okay, when this doctor, you know, everything was going good. I went to the doctor because I had a little bit of cramping. Went to the doc hospital. I went to the hospital. I went to GBMC. I had a little cramping. They was like, you know, um, everything is good. Your levels, my levels was actually increasing. My levels at this time was like a thousand and something. So I'm like, wow, my levels never been that high while I was pregnant. Never. So I'm like, wow, this, I said, babe, this probably, you know, this is the one. It <coughs> He was like, Alexis, we're going to have this one baby. That's it. You know, we ain't going to keep popping up no babies. So I'm like, okay. So um, I went to the doctor's on March 29th. So I ended up going to the doctor's again March 31st. Ended up going again March 31st because I started bleeding. Started cramping, bleeding. Me and my boyfriend went to the doctor's. They was like, you know. It does look like you're going to miscarry, but your levels is right there. We just need them to increase, you know, try to not do too much and stuff like that. So, again, the lady was like, your progesterone do look a little low. They didn't prescribe me anything. So, I finally had, I finally had my appointment with my doctor, but by that time, I was already miscarrying. Like, I was bleeding so much. And... Um, I was seven weeks. I actually, once he met me, I had to get a DNC. So it's a procedure to make sure it passed. I miscarried for about two months. Like the baby would, it just wouldn't come out at the DNC. It was still tissue and stuff stuck. It was still, I was still bleeding a lot. So they gave me some pills. I don't want to mispronounce that. I think it's misoprostitol, something like that. Um, to make it pass so I had to stick up like four of my vagina and let the bleed in so like I had the DNC March 4th um I didn't fully like everything didn't fully come out I mean April 4th I had the DNC everything didn't come out until like beginning of May and like it was real hard like that fourth one I was just like tired i was just like oh my goodness this is happening like i just was like you know i felt like i wasn't woman enough to do what i was supposed to do like i felt so bad because i just felt so bad i'm like this is what i'm supposed to do why can't i do it and i went to therapy they just put me to a psychiatrist they didn't told me i had depression anxiety um they gave me, um, they gave me Xanax. They gave me, um, some pills for my depression, for my mood swings. They just gave me so much medicine and I did not take that medicine, but it was a really hard time. And even for my boyfriend, he was just like, I know he probably hated my guts. He probably wanted to leave me and some more stuff because I was just real toxic. Like... And I'm honestly going to say that because I was just like, I didn't want to do nothing. Like, when I did go out, I was forcing myself to go out, just looking out of space. Like, I just wasn't myself. And I can admit that now because I'm, I'm, I'm through the healing and I'm in a better place. But 
I was just really like going to work like I didn't want people talking to me like I didn't want people near me like you know like just to go inside of work I would have to sit in my car and calm myself down and you know and it was just hard like I don't wish this on my worst enemy it was so hard and at this time, a lot of people didn't know, like, what I was going through. Like, the first one, I let it be known that, yeah, I had a miscarriage, but my fourth one, a lot of people didn't know. Only, like, my best friend, my boyfriend, my mom, my grandmother, and my close friend. But I was just, like, I was just, like, gone, you know? And when you go through this loss, it's not easy because then you, you have friends, like, everybody's pregnant everybody's inviting you to their baby shower and it's just like it's not happening to me and actually when my first one when i was pregnant my best friend was pregnant and i found out i was pregnant but i was losing it it was sad i was like oh you know i was so sad but it's not easy and i can honestly say that it will happen and when it happened, I will enjoy it so much more. You know, I'll be a great mom. I know I will. So, yeah. So, that's just... And then this year, um, this year, uh, I found out I was pregnant. Um, you know, my period didn't come. I'm like, I feel pregnant. My boobs were sore again. I was nauseous and just really tired. Like, every time I get pregnant, I get really tired and my boobs get sore, like... I be knowing, like, I know, like, it's something in my body that tells me, or my grandmother, every time I'm pregnant, I go around, you pregnant? I'm like, no. I mean, let me take a test, because this lady is always right. And, um, I took a test, I, it was positive, you know, um, I had to go get blood work, the blood work, my levels was like at a seven, which was, no, they were at a nine, actually, they were at a nine. And then they dropped down to a seven. So my doctor, you know, he emailed me and called me, asked me how I was doing. And was like, you know, it looks like we'll miscarry again. And I did. And actually, I took it well. I cried, but I took it well. And the day of my graduation from um, college, and the day of my graduation, I, um, Actually, the baby passed in the toilet. And, you know, I was real sad. But I was also happy because I was graduating. But I was real sad because I felt like that was my break. Like, I'm graduating, you know, I'm doing better in the process of buying a house. You know, everything is just going to go good. But I ended up miscarrying. And now I'm on to try to conceive. I actually, me and my boyfriend came to agreement. We're going to have this one baby. And we're going to see what it do so we went to the i went to the infertility clinic you know he got blood work all that stuff done he he was good and i'm just jealous because it's like mm, it's all me so um i found a infertility specialist and her name is andrika hinton she specialized with gbmc2 and she's awesome um when I first went in, you know, she was like, wow, you know, it keep happening. So we need to see why this baby's not sticking. You know, we need to get to the bottom. I had like 10 labs done. Um, I list the labs in the bio again. Make sure you like, subscribe, and, you know, share your story as well if you went through this and things that helped you conceive and to have a healthy, sticky baby. So, um, I got 10 works, lab works done. My results came in. So, doctor, my doctor, my OBGYN, Dr. Kazami, he let me know I had a progesterone defect. Because even with my fifth baby, I thought it was going to stick because I had the progesterones. I was inserting them vaginally every day. But I still ended up miscarrying. But after I got my blood work done with Miss Adrika Hinton, um, she let me know that I had insulin resistant, low vitamin D, also the progesterone defect. So insulin resistant is something I never even heard of. 
Like I didn't know I had it, but basically my body works extra, extra hard to keep my blood sugar um, normal. So it's not enough insulin to keep them blood sugars normal. So um, she was like, you know, that could cause the progesterone defect. Also, you know, insulin can be very toxic to the embryo, which is actually a part of that makes the baby. So um, she prescribed me metformin. Now metformin, she prescribed me metformin, which was 750 milligram tablets. And I had to take one tablet by mouth daily after dinner and then for one week and then take two tablets by mouth every day with dinner. Um, I stopped taking these. I stopped taking these because the way they was making me feel. The side effects was terrible of this medication. Um, so I found more natural ways. Um, like I put exercise into my diet. Also, been not trying to eat so much sugar and things like that. Also, next month I'm going on a cleanse, and I'm only going to do a plant-based alkaline diet. Also, I found herbs, teas, um, supplements, and things like that to help with my insulin resistance other than it's metformin and also um i found herbs and supplements to help with my low progesterone and also my hormonal balance um so with ttc so ttc is trying to conceive so every so i just got off my period i got off my period yesterday so i take an ovulation kit was one of these um i get it from amazon i put the link in the bio get it from amazon i get like 50 um ovulation tests and then 20 um early pregnancy tests so with this after my period um i take i take it twice a day um i take one in the morning like around 10 or 11 and then the other one around like seven or eight um at night and actually i have the app called pre-mom i also have the app called thermometer i think that's what it's called and i take a picture of it and let me know when i get my um positive ovulation so you try to have sex when you're ovulating you know, um, sperm can actually stay in your body for like three to five days, I believe. And so you have sex. Some people have sex every other day. Um, it's best that way, just so you won't tie yourself out and then the sperm and everything. So every other day and then um, make sure you do it on your actual ovulation day. So, um, yeah so and then during a two-week wait i take during a two-week wait so after i get my positive it's a two-week wait until your next period so you can test at eight days past ovulation but just not to stress myself out and to be worried i wait until the day of my period to see if it comes if it comes okay it's it was in my cycle if it don't come i take a pregnancy test and yeah, so during my two week wait, so once I get a positive, um, three days past ovulation, I start taking my progesterone pills. And I, again, I insert one vaginally every day up until 14 days. Again, if I get a positive pregnancy test, I continue to take them. If I get a negative, I stop taking them, try again next cycle. This is how the pill looks. Um, and also I take supplements every day. I take so many supplements. <laughs> uh, so I take two rituals. These are the prenatal vitamins I take. I take, um, four of these myo Institol. And again, I'll put this stuff in the description. Um, I do whole story brand. I take, um, one K2 vitamin every day. folic acid and um q2 q c q10 and also i take a um 
vitamin D as well for my little vitamin D. I take the K2 because um, the vitamin D so it can stick and I take these every day. I take those about at 12 p.m. every day after breakfast. So, um, yeah. So, this cycle, let's hope we get a positive pregnancy test. Let's hope. But if not, it's okay. Um, again, this is just to bring awareness because it's a lot of females that goes, go through it. And I think it will be more open to talk about it and females will be okay and not be so hard on themselves because I was very hard on myself until I shared my story and was like, oh, it's thousands of us. It's, it's plenty of us, you know? It's other females that's going through this. I felt alone because again, like my close friends and stuff, you know, didn't go through this or like my family is very fertile. Like my great grandmother, she had 15 kids. Um, my sister, they have a lot of kids, my cousin, even my mom. So I'm just like, why me? So yeah, just bring awareness. Um, my boyfriend, you know, he took it, I can't say he took it hard, but he took it better than me because I do let things consume me and control me. And this is one of those things that really was like hard and I'm finally making a video about it. Um, just to share it. Um, I didn't do any editing to this video. I'm not going to do any editing. Um, I did this video without crying, which was really good because when I say it, it's been a journey, it's been a journey and I don't wish on anybody. I just want my rainbow baby and we can be happy ever after, you know, and it's a lot of us out there and don't be scared to share your story. You know, just keep pushing every time it knocks you down, you get up fighting. You're going to have bad days because I still have days where I sit in the bed and, you know, of like when due dates arrive or when you'll be 15 weeks and like certain things come up and you get sad, you know, like Mother's Day. And I have good friends, my boyfriend, my mom, everybody, you know. Who makes me feel good like on Mother's Day they get me stuff and you know and it's gonna happen and that's all I say like it's gonna happen when it's my time it's gonna be my time and I'm gonna be very excited I hope any um, anyone that's going through this I hope you guys get your rainbow baby whether you had to go through an IUI IVF however had to get a donor surrogate I just hope you get that time and get what you want out of it. Um, but yeah, let's bring awareness to it, you know. And if you have any questions, you know, let me know. I can do a QA. And again, yeah, so my boyfriend think I should throw these away, but I literally had every test for every pregnancy and stuff for um the first one and yeah you know we're gonna get through it see you guys later again like subscribe and share please share see you